Hello, and thank you for giving me the time to share my experience of grief and loss. My name is Vajra Alaya Maitreya, and I'm one of eight siblings, the older sister and friend of Talishan Nankaimeche, whom I lovingly in life and death refer to as Tilly. Tilly and I are the children of Asha Deliverance and Christopher Dupra. We have seven siblings, Chris Wajum, Malita Charan, Ati Nasia, Elias De Cristo, Indira St. Clair, Kriya Krishnavai Patanjali, and Aurora Dejan. Our family, however, the family, family that filled our lives with added love and support, extends overpoweringly not only to our grandparents, aunts, and uncles that were pillars of guidance, or our cousins that grew up as siblings, but to a beautiful and full community in Ashland, Oregon. For my brother, that was his godfather, Cedar Miller, the Shantis, the Almquist Heaters, and many more. While we grew up with supportive and loving parents, we were raised additionally by the amazing members of our community and by each other. My older siblings were a huge part of my upbringing, and I was, in addition to them, a huge part of my brothers. Every single one of my family members is here in heart. While the pain of revisiting my brother's death through these proceedings is too much for some of them, many, like myself, are here today to share the immense and painful impact of the tragic loss of my brother. Some have written dozens of impact statements only to be too overwhelmed to share in this forum, but many of us feel the need to express how fully losing Tilly has changed our lives. Present today remotely are my parents, my brother, Chris Lejeune, my sisters, Melita Charan and Auntie Nasia, my cousin, Allison Van Alphen, that lived with us growing up, my aunt, Teresa Van Alphen, my aunts, Teresa Van Alphen and Marcy Dupra, and my uncle, Eric Dupra, as well as my grandmother, Virginia Anderson. My mother, brother, Christopher, sister, Auntie, and Aunt Teresa will address the court, and a written statement will be read on behalf of my father. It feels nearly impossible to express the enormous role my brother played in our family. We are a mixed family, though I never realized my siblings were half-siblings until I was much older. Talishan, however, was my father's only son, and he had my father's unique ability to bring levity and humor to challenging situations. He was incredibly bright and always showed talent in every aspect of his life. It was a huge gift to watch him grow up, to teach him math, see him excel in school, cheer him on at his little league and soccer games, listen to him freestyle at family gatherings, and with five older sisters, also give him endless grief when he wasn't a good feminist. While he could have done anything with his life, he cared deeply for the world. Like all of us, he was raised to celebrate diversity, be a steward to the planet, and to stand up for his beliefs. Like all of us, he had a deep desire to be a supportive ally and to make sure this planet was left in a better place than when he came into it. We were so proud of him when he was accepted to Reed College as a junior in high school and impressed at his reflections when he took a gap year to experience other cultures and places. We expected him to use every privilege he had as an educated white male to make this world better. And when he took a job at Cadmus Group, a consultancy focused on socio-environmental challenges, we were not at all surprised. He was thrilled to have found a place for growth in an organization that shared his values for equity and environmental preservation. He loved his newfound stability and was excited to go grow roots in Portland to have weekly family dinners with some of his sisters, to play in his yard with his nephews and nieces, to create a support plan for a sister who suffers from schizophrenia, and of course, to be a part of the support network for our parents. He had big dreams, and we all dreamed with him. Tilly's death was an enormous blow to our entire family on countless levels. My parents, siblings, and extended family are still reeling from the loss. The graphic and violent nature has created a trauma response for all of us. My sister, who is managing to live a relatively normal life with her mental illness, is unrecognizable. The moment Tilly died, we lost two siblings. My mother, however, not only had to deal with the loss of her son, 
but with the loss and demanding care of her daughter. Talishan was a huge part of the family support network. He was actively engaged and had deep connections to all of us and a strong sense of responsibility in caring for his family as a whole. My younger sister was 18 at the time and witnessed the freak and graphic violent stabbing of a dear friend only a few months before my brother was murdered by Mr. Christian. She held her friend in her arms while he died and then had to run for fear of her own life. The first person she called once she made it to safety was my brother, Talishan. He was a pillar of strength for all of us. Imagine the impact of losing your brother to the same kind of traumatic incident, to the same stab wounds that took the life of your friend only months prior. And after your brother's death, to be traumatized by trolling online when people sent you graphic and violent images. My other younger sister began her master's in teaching the summer of my brother's death and a visit to the MAP station was part of her syllabus as a part of a dialogue on Portland's racist and inequitable past and present. We all lost not only our brother and friend, but we lost him in a traumatic and terrible way that we have had to continually confront in our daily lives. I moved to Portland with my two children and husband one, more, one month before my brother's death. We moved into a house that he found for us and lived in for two years before my family was able to transition from Oakland, California. We moved to Portland to be near my brother, Felicia, and my sister, Kriya. We had weekly dinners with extra visits in between in the month before his death. We had endless plans for camping and running, and my brother had countless hopes, however unfounded, that I would start cooking extra portions so he could give up on trying to cook himself. I was a no taper. At the playground, he introduced me and my children to on the day he died. I drove past the map station that evening after picking up my husband from the airport, roped off and chaotic. It was my door that the police came to at 10.45 p.m. the night of May 26, 2017. And it was on my stairs sobbing that I was the first family member to hear of my brother's death. My sister Kriya and I had to call our parents and siblings and tell them that their son and brother was dead. I had to suffer the traumatic loss of my brother in a house still filled with unpacked boxes, in a house that had been his home, and in a place where he and my sister were my only community a place he had dreamed for my family and I. I had to parent my children as a shell of a person, crawling into a corner in fetal position every time an ambulance passed or my husband slapped a fly loudly and I was startled. I had to suffer the loss of a brother that was not only a sibling and uncle, but a best friend. I had just arrived. After years of living too far away, he had plans. We had plans. He was supposed to be the uncle that stuffed my kids' ice cream and pushed them on swings. Instead, I have spent three years in therapy, learning tools to help me back to the emotional place where I started, to assist me in being a better parent and partner, and to live with the PTSD this event has caused. My brother stood up on that train because he had a strong moral compass, because he wanted to be a good ally. He did so in the way his gut led him, as our education system never taught him how to de-escalate, and our upbringing did not prepare him for the violent way hate can manifest. If he was alive today, you can bet he would be out protesting every night, that he would be educating himself on how to be actively anti-racist, he would be signing petitions for universal child care and reminding me that the silver lining of this pandemic is that people are driving less and that the unrest has given space for much needed action for change. He had a huge heart and his intentions were always the best. He never left a friend in need or backed out in the face of injustice. 
He would be showing up for this world and community and still sending my kids silly messages and hosting social distance barbecues in his backyard so he could see them play, feed them junk food, and make us all laugh. I wish that I could look you in the face as I say this. Your crime, Mr. Christian, was not only the murder of my brother, but robbery. You robbed me of one of my favorite people on this planet. You robbed me of the look on his face when he sang happy birthday to my son on his first, second, and third birthday. Of his wild dancing at my sister's weddings. Of watching my daughter laugh as he gave her crazy shoulder rides. You robbed me of chasing his future kids around a yard, of hikes, camping, fights, meals, and a huge amount of loving support. You also robbed me of my disillusionment, and I will honor my brother every day by seeing the inequity of this world and doing what I can to be a better ally and human. Your crimes have many victims, not just defined as defined by law, Every person on that mass train that lives with trauma in their bodies after witnessing these events. Any person intimidated to ride transit to get where they need to go. And even your own family. Your mother that I watched for weeks show up because love is stronger than hate. This community and the world offered such a huge outpouring of overwhelming love and support. We have felt so blessed to see that my brother's light was carried on in the hearts of many. It unified our family with this community as we felt solidarity in our grief. It offered us rays of hope in the midst of all the darkness. It showed us the power of community once again. To all of you, those we know and those we've never met, we were supported by immense love and generosity tangibly shown in the forms of meals, childcare, and financial contributions. Because of this support, financial hardship and disaster were not added to the emotional toll of Tilly's loss. You enabled us to be together, to weep over his body, as a family united by our love for him and one another. We have been and continue to be more grateful than I can describe. I want to thank every witness that braved reliving that day and the prosecutors and advocates that not only worked tirelessly but also created a safe place for our family throughout this journey. I am endlessly grateful that resources like the Crime Victims Law Center exist. It provided our family the immense gift of having Erin Olson as our family's representation and I honestly don't know that I would have survived navigating this without her. To the jury that gave away a month of their lives to make sure that a just verdict was reached, and certainly to this court for the sympathetic, resourceful, and protective way you have handled the proceedings in this case. I hope that Mr. Christian will receive true life in prison with no chance of parole, that he will be separated from those that have his proclivity for racial and religious prejudice. I hope that I will never have to worry about seeing him on the streets or have to see his face anywhere for the rest of my life. I want to leave this trauma behind and finally have space to grieve my brother, my big little brother, with a receding hairline that wore my tutus to sell lemonade when we were little, that washed Legally Blonde 700 times, that played lawyer in speech and debate, that lectured me on transferring colleges, that was one of the first set of hands to hold my daughter, my sweet brother that smiled like